Hi, this is Rob Sheen with the Source Conference, and I'm here today with Kevin Babcock, who is a principal security engineer at uh, PagerDuty, and he's going to be speaking at the Phoenix Mesa Conference coming up on February 28th and March 1st, and his topic is uh, starting a career in cybersecurity, which is great. So we're actually going to be doing a mini career track at, um, at the Phoenix Mesa event, so that's going to be cool. So um, why don't you start, just tell us a little bit about your talk. Sure. I am talking, as you said, about starting a career in cybersecurity. And I have found that cybersecurity is an excellent place for a career. I've been doing it for nearly 20 years, and I ended up falling it into it by accident and have really enjoyed uh, working in the area. And I have found that one of the big challenges we are having today is that there's a, a real shortage of people with the well, with the experience to work in the field. And I'm hoping that by sharing some of my experiences and some of the pathways that you can take to move from adjacent fields into cybersecurity, we'll be able to help address that shortage of workers in the field and therefore be able to better protect our systems and our people. Great. What do you see as some examples of some adjacent fields that, that could be easy to transition into security? There's, there's a number of areas. If I look at what skills I need to have that are most important to my job every day, a lot of people would assume immediately that technology development, programming are key skills. And while that's correct, I would say that actually working with technology is only about 30% of my job. It turns out that the vast majority and the most important parts of doing cybersecurity are often more, I guess you'd call them soft skills, things like mm -hmm. communication, negotiation, being able to work with people and come to an understanding of the kinds of approaches that you would take to solve a problem. And I think that those skills are something that you can develop in all kinds of different jobs. It doesn't have to be a a technology job. It doesn't have to be a security job. So things like, uh, well, software development, you, you could move into security from, and that is a technical skill. But something like an auditor position is somewhat technical, but it is really involved more in looking at data and working with people to understand their processes. And those kinds of roles are really natural to go into a cybersecurity. I could see people coming from a maybe a legal or a paralegal background where you've got those really strong analytical skills and excellent written and verbal communication. Those kinds of, of skills and experience would be extraordinarily valuable in being able to do cybersecurity work. Right. We could certainly use some better writers in our field, that's for sure. <laughs> Um, we actually are going to have somebody at the, at the conference also who is um, an expert in writing and going to be doing something called the style guide for security. So that's going to be cool. Um, oh, awesome. So here's here's the the big controversial question. Or, you know, when we talk about career development, this one's been you know beaten to death over the years. But I always just like to throw it out there and get people's opinions. Certifications, yes or no? Should people get certifications? And which ones? If so. It depends. It, so I, I am a certified information systems security professional, and I got certified back at the beginning of my career because I saw it as a way to learn more about the profession. There are certain certifications that can, you know, they catch the eye. They, they will get your foot in the door, but it's really the, the, the skills and the abilities that you have that will enable you to do the job. And so I would say there are, are certain certifications that are better regarded and, and may be in demand, and there are other certifications where you know, you're probably just putting time and money into something that doesn't provide, provide a lot of value. In terms right. of what you learn going through the certification, I've found that the the on-the-job experience is much more valuable than any kind of um, preparation class or, or study guide or anything like that that you might go through. Right, right. Um, yeah, w when we were putting together the little mini career development track, somebody had asked about you know maybe doing a talk on certifications and whether or not people that are new to the field should get them. 
And I was like, well, we don't need to talk for that because if you're new to the field, of course you need to get them because you got to get past the checklist on that the recruiters have. So, um, you know, that seems to become a, a no brainer, but so that, that kind of leads to my next question, which is how do people with, you know, limited experience in security or even a little bit of experience, but just, you know, maybe not all the checkpoints, how do they get past those, um, those checklist driven hiring managers where they're looking for all the buzzwords yeah. on the resume? Well, I, I will look at myself as an example. I did not start my career in cybersecurity. And in fact, when I was starting out, they weren't even teaching classes in, in university or in college because it just hadn't become an important field yet. And I learned by doing work as a software engineer and I started working on security related projects and found it to be really fascinating. So I intentionally went to learn more about it. And by doing work that was related to security or security work that I could do in my current job, I started to build up a portfolio of expertise that I could talk about. And this is what I would recommend to anyone who's interested in moving into the field is look for places in your current job where you can start doing work that relates to or is specifically in cybersecurity. And as you start to build up that experience, you will be able to honestly represent yourself as having knowledge and skills in the area. And at some point, you'll be at the tipping point where you'll have enough that you can represent yourself as someone who isn't just a, a person on the outside, but a per person who has the capabilities to actually perform. And when we look at the statistics, it, it's been posted that there is 0% unemployment in cybersecurity. There's a research survey that says there will be a 1.5 million job shortage by 2019. There's a lot of pressure on the hiring side to pull in people who have the ability and the interest to do these jobs. And there's not going to be a lot of friction if you are interested. Right, right. I think that's great advice for anybody that wants to pivot into any careers. Start doing the job you want to be paid for before you are getting paid for it. And then eventually you'll build up enough of experience. You know, you can totally design the resume you need if you're thoughtful about it. It just might take a little bit of time to get you there. So. That's cool. So, all right, one last yeah. thing. Um, you mentioned in your abstract um, NIST's NICE security, cybersecurity workforce framework. Um, how does that, just at a high level, because I know you're gonna talk about it in your talk, but at a high level, um, how does that help you map to a career path? Yeah, well, NIST is the National Institute of Standards and Technology, and they put together a, a framework that you alluded to, the NICE cybersecurity framework, that actually maps out all the different kinds of cybersecurity work that people are doing in different industries. And they've created this standard taxonomy that talks about here's the kind of work that needs to be done regardless of what the particular job title might be. And so it's a, a nicely broken down way of looking at what jobs are out there and then what skills are required to be successful in those jobs. So I'm going to talk about this framework in my talk and I also am going to pull in some information that I have collected through interviews and surveys with hiring managers in the cybersecurity field to highlight really what of those skills and jobs they're looking for when they're trying to bring someone into a position they have on the team. Awesome, awesome. So this will be great for anybody that's looking for, um, you know, making the transition into cybersecurity or just, you know, starting from wherever they're at and getting to the next level. So I think this will be a good talk for people. So, um, so great, thanks for, for joining us today. And I definitely uh, look forward to seeing your talk at Source Phoenix Mesa on uh, February 28th and March 1st. And um, if anybody there wants to continue this conversation, uh, Kevin will be at the conference, I think for the entire time, right? That's right. I'm very much looking forward to sharing with you and having further conversations. Great, thanks a lot. Talk to you guys, talk to you soon.